Hello, people on the internet. In this video, I will show you the process of my second block drawing from start to finish with traditional atelier method and standard. I just finished the first simple construct. Moving on to the second one, there are many ways to measure and build a construct. Some ateliers use a thin string, some ateliers, like the one I tend to, use a needle. I find needle is quicker to use as it can be operated with just one hand, but it is a lot thicker than a string, therefore, a lot less accurate. The vertical and horizontal line you see here are called plumb lines. The way I measure is I measure with a needle from the plumb line, find the X and the Y location of each turning point. Then I simply connect the dots with nice bendy lines. Now, some people might say, oh, you are not practicing measuring, you are letting the needle to do all the work. Yes. Needle does a lot of work, gives a good starting point, but it is not precise at all. Mind you, the definition of precise in bulk drawing is on another level. We are talking about millimeters. At the end, you still need to rely on your eyes. That's why a needle is okay to use, while a ruler is not. You're not supposed to read the exact distance because then you won't use your eyes to see the lines and shapes, but just look for numbers. You notice my drawing is the same size as my reference. If I draw it bigger, which I will in the future, it will be a lot harder. Because then not only I need to get the right proportions, I also need to scale it up. That's like doing two hard things at once. It's like juggling balls. For new learners, we start from juggling one ball, then two balls, then three balls, then four, then five, then six, and seven, then we can juggle knives. Not only you have to catch it, but you also have to catch it on the handle. Two knives, three knives, four knives, 5 knives, 6 knives, 7 knives, 8 knives, 9 knives. I spend a whole day at Atelier, added more information on outline. Shadow area is blocked in, so it's easier for me to check the shapes. It is ready to transfer. We first draw on this cheaper and thinner paper, erase and redraw however we want. When the construct is ready, we use a good paper called Stonehenge, there are many kinds of Stonehenge papers. Pearl grey is the kind we use. It has a nice tone to it. Not too white, just like the bark plates. When working on this nicer paper, I try my best to not damage the paper. As for this transfer process, I don't want to apply too much pressure. And now the coloring process starts from shadow areas. So I have a nice solid tone to start with. Like I mentioned in my last video, a few passes are needed. Each pass will require a sharper pencil. First couple passes are okay to mindlessly feel, but later I will have to look for where the pencil tip touches and specifically fill in lighter spots. Let's work on the wrist area. The first thing is sharpen the pencil of course.
I saw Kamp saying the pencil doesn't have to be this sharp. It's not necessary. Well, it is very necessary. In fact, it's still not sharp enough, according to one of my instructors who has a very high standard. He kept telling me my pencil is not sharp enough, so he did a demo for me. You probably can't tell much difference, but let me put his besides mine. It's still kind of hard to see, but you can see his is definitely more pointy. The camera was struggling to focus. Let's take a look at this still image. You see different texture on pencil lead. Pencil on the left was sharpened with a charcoal sharpening block, which I mentioned in the last video. It's a little bit too rough. Pencil on the right was sharpened with a 220 grade sanding paper. It is much smoother. Let's zoom in closer. His is f twice sharper. Twice. No shit. Any thinner will probably create a f black hole. Look at this beautiful shape. So beautiful. That if you give a slightly, slightly too much pressure, it will snap off, and that is actually forcing you to train your handling of a pencil. Once you can control your hand, fingers that precise and sensitive, you can even use a tube to do all the light areas. And that's actually what this monster instructor did with his box drawings. And trust me, I tried it. It's super hardcore. I can't do it yet. Guys, there's nothing wrong by going extreme. One thing that I learned from box drawing, besides from many many other important things, is to push yourself. Spend your time and energy to truly push yourself to a whole new standard. There's a whole new level unlocked. It's like, say, say there's a farmer. This farmer spent a whole spring planting this fruit, and by fall, the farmer harvests it and sells it. Big juicy watermelon cows go moo. Super kid, you be a lawyer. But mom, I want to become an artist. Hey, I would like to buy it. The farmer makes some money. One time, the farmer decides to spend two springs nurturing the fruit. The farmer finds he can get the fruit a lot juicier and sweeter. But although the farmer doubled his time for the fruit, he probably won't be able to double the fruit's selling price. The farmer might even lose money. The farmer then spent three springs, four springs, and sixty-nine springs a long time nurturing this fruit. Other farmers think he's crazy, and that is crazy. But until one day, this farmer brings a huge juicy fruit to the market. Goodbye. Everyone in town is speechless. When they look to the farmer with admiration, they find the farmer has passed away with poverty, starvation, and old age. Oh, so this is called art. This story is just a joke. What I meant was, if you keep pushing yourself. Spending more time and energy perfecting your crafts, you will get your bigger shiny fruit one day, or not, and that's okay. Well, it's actually not okay, but it depends on your goal. What is what is it that you want? I've tried too hard to elevate this conversation. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Actually, I do know what I'm talking about, but it's too complicated to express it in this short video clip, especially its ending soon, like right now.